Hello summoners welcome back to a brand new Riot's gaming video. Yes you hear right Riot is launching lots of games among them. There is a MMO games too. And if you don't know what is MMO, let me clear you. MMO stands for Massively Multiplayer Online Game. MMOs usually feature a huge open world where it is persistent, so this open world will the universe of League of Legends. As a result the lore will be the main storyline or game progress method. As far Riot still not reveal the total lore yet. Or maybe by the course of time they will open up. It and we will have the idea how the universe will work in this new MMO game. And if you guys have no idea what is lore and don't understand it. I will recommend you to watch Necrit. He explained lots of things about League of Legends universe and about the champion's origins. And League of Legends MMO game will be actually a huge MMO. Where we will have to deal out of worlds also. I mean out of the universe as a result making a huge game like this MMO will take huge time. But for Riot it will not be that hard. But it will be a challenging task to give a proper shape of lore and at the same time run a huge MMO. I have trust on Riot and we are actually waiting for more updates about this big MMO. The approximate release date may be in the third quarter of 2021. And this game will be the biggest challenge for Riot I think. As for this game there will reveal lots of future plan for League of Legends. Though League of Legends is a forever green game just for this developers. And I also wish this brand new MMO will have a great shape and will rock on other RPG games. Really, I have been putting off making this video for the longest time. I thought maybe someday, I'll get it. Maybe someday I'll agree with the League of Legends fanbase that things aren't as bad as they seem. But then, Eternals came out. What. The. Hell. When I first saw what Eternals were all about, I had no words. Is Riot really doing this? Is Riot really monetizing achievements? This is the straw that broke the camel's back. For a while, I have been compiling a list of what I believe to be the majority of issues plaguing League of Legends, from gameplay, to game modes, to smurfing. I have seen next to no people in my immediate vicinity talk about what I perceive to be major flaws with the game, so I thought it might be just me, but with this Eternals BS, I am going all in to rip Riot a new asshole. Jesus Christ, let's just get into it. The good. Okay, so, to pretend like I have some semblance of nuance in my feelings towards League, I want to be fair and present some things that I like about it. Believe it or not, there is some good, and I want to address this. To start with the strongest point for this game, the character designs are superb across the board. I am only referring to their looks here, their kits are a whole different story entirely, but man. The character designers at Riot are so incredibly talented. There are over 100 playable champions in the game, and yet none of them stand out as bland or bad looking. The designs are unique, and their silhouettes are easily recognizable. The visual effects in-game make it very clear what champion you're dealing with, assuming they don't wear any skins, so I got basically no complaints there. In line with that, the voice acting for the champions is all pretty good as well. I like Volibear. He's a swell bear dude and he flips people under the tower and he munches on them. His voice is also badass and he's just cool. Either way, he's my favorite champion to come back to until the sad, sad day where they kill him forever which will either happen soon or has already happened. I cry. Let's see, Aram is also an alright game mode I guess. Yeah, about all I have to say on that one. And that's it. That's all the good things I have to say about League really. I would name the music videos as well since the music Riot produces outside of the game is consistently top notch, but it really doesn't have any impact on the playing experience. The in-game music itself is nothing to write home about unfortunately, just fantasy sounding background noise. So with that, let's jump into why League of Legends sucks so very much.
Matchmaking, smurfing, and toxicity. Who boy. I'm just gonna come out and say it. The matchmaking in League of Legends is absolute shit. I have played the game mostly with friends who have been playing the game for a while, so granted that might impact my perspective on this point quite a bit, but even when playing by myself, the matchmaking is a total mess. I am always fighting people who are above my skill level, or people who are way below. There is rarely a close game. This is in large part due to the enormous amount of smurfs in the game. This is a huge problem. Not only does it completely wreck the matchmaking, it wrecks the games themselves. There are, from what I can come up with, three solutions for this. Either scale MMR more drastically when an account is playing its first few games and compensate later, put some kind of restriction in place for newly made accounts and matchmaking to deter new people from smurfing, or make smurfing a bannable offense. Of these three options, I am more of a fan of the latter. Smurfs are fun for themselves, and maybe the team they happen to be on, but everyone else suffers for it. And when they suffer, they are more likely to participate in League's most notorious feature, toxicity. I feel like I'm beating a dead horse here, but even as a veteran pre-reworked Symmetra attack player in Overwatch, I was not prepared for the toxicity this community harbors. Nearly every game is filled with tired, angry people who can't handle the reality of playing a game. Sometimes you lose, and sometimes someone is not as good as you. But since matches take at least 15 minutes, and since League's mechanics mostly benefit the currently winning team, to these toxic individuals, playing a losing game feels like a waste of time. And I can understand that, I can even understand getting angry, but I cannot and will not understand releasing your anger with the game on other people. If you can keep yourself together when things don't go your way, maybe interacting with dozens of people on a daily basis isn't something you should be doing, or rather, something you should be allowed. To do. It completely ruins the fun for everyone. We're playing a game for crying out loud. That's the entire goal, to have fun. Now you may be wondering, if this is such a huge problem, there must be a good report system in place to catch these people, right? I think you know just as well as I do what the answer is by now. The reason this community is so bad is because no one gets punished. And when they do, it is often an incredibly lackluster punishment that doesn't deter anyone from doing much of anything. The report system is completely automated with no human reviewers. Report systems do not work like this. We are talking about human and emotional situations. Every one of these situations is different in some way, be it big or small. As such, the system can't pick up on nuances that could result in a ban, while humans could. The only way to get consistently banned in League is to either say all the swear words you could possibly imagine, or you run it down so hard that the system starts to notice something clearly wrong. The problem with this is that toxic behavior usually isn't as cut and dry as this. People who don't do things as bad as what I just mentioned, but still negatively affect the game, should be slammed with a ban hammer as well. Passive aggressive comments and pinging are so much more frequent, but no actions are taken against these people because the system can't pick up on it. And let's say someone is losing incredibly hard. Even then, who knows if they're just having a bad game? What if they build every item they should, do everything in their power, and still get stomped anyway? How does this look different from a troll who does the exact same thing, and just looks like he's trying? Of course, it won't be possible for humans to decode all of these situations either, but having them involved in a reporting process at least allows a chance for more justified bans. With a game of this scale, Having a fully human report review team isn't reasonable, but a hybrid between automation and human review is necessary to slowly get out of the cesspool of toxicity that League is known for. Riot recently made an announcement to make improvements to the reporting system on the running it down side of things, and while this is a step in the right direction, these systems should realistically already have been perfected when this game has been out for so long. Other games have gotten it right already, League of Legends has absolutely no excuse not to do the same. Eternals. Okay, you saw this coming. Screw Eternals. 
I don't think I need to explain why monetizing achievements is ridiculous. I think TB Sky said it best in his video. Making achievements in your game free, even though it costs development time and resources, is just the cost of doing business. If you want more details and a better take on this whole thing than I could ever come up with, check out his video, link in the description. That being said, I'm still going to offer a small part of my perspective. Riot is a multi-billion dollar company, and as such they can very easily afford implementing a system like this. With this monetization scheme, they are preying on the people who cannot resist having the latest and shiniest way to display something that the game should realistically keep track of already. This is such an insane EA level stunt, and I'm glad people are rightfully speaking up about this. It actually makes me have the smallest, smallest glint of hope for the League of Legends community. That being said, the idea for Eternals is fun. Being able to show off how many cool things you can do with your favorite champion in the form of a little icon is fine. The execution is just beyond flawed. The fact that you have to earn or buy them makes Riot seem incredibly out of touch with the current gaming landscape at best, and a terrible company that hates its customers at worst. On top of that, the Eternals you can earn with Blue Essence are the most generic ones that don't give you any sort of insights as to how you play your champion. Honestly, I'm scared of how successful this will actually end up being. I couldn't find any numbers, but I can imagine plenty of people falling for this. If you were thinking of getting an Eternal for your favorite champion, I beg of you, please don't. Please just don't reward Riot for doing this. The League community needs to form a front on this to make sure Riot cannot get away with doing this. Which I, unfortunately, already think they have. Anyway, next on the agenda is leaving a like and subscribing to be notified of every new video. That's the good stuff, you guys. Game Balance I was originally going to go more in depth in this section than I actually ended up doing in the draft of the script that I'm reading from right now. Frankly, I wanted to make the points fit more of an analytical perspective, but I don't think I'm cut out to do so in this case. I am simply not of a high enough skill level with League to where I can solidly grasp where the balance of it goes wrong. What I can do is make more general observations about my experiences with the game balancing and what I think about it, much like the other parts of this video. So, what do I think about the balancing? Well, this might come as a shock to you, but it's not great. How about that? First off, the champions. Jesus Christ, I don't think I've ever wanted to yell at a game this much in my entire life. There are so many champions that are just excruciating to fight. Abilities that are designed to just be the most obnoxious shit to deal with. So many champions with tons of dashes, dumb passives, or insane stats. At least once, almost every game, I've had the thought, screw this. No wonder this community is so toxic. Also, I said I wasn't going too deep into this, but one champion I want to quickly highlight is Alawi. Alawi is a badly designed champion. Let me paint a scenario for you. Say you're fighting Alawi in the top lane. You're playing a tank, you're getting your CS, things are going well. You decide that, since Alawi is on the low side of her health, you go after her once she grabs a minion close to you. Now that's where you're thinking wrong, buddy. You don't just go after Alawi, what are you, stupid? Because this character is very cool and obviously very well made, after you get your first ability out, she rips your soul out of you, presses R, and starts to slap you into submission. Because Alawi has Conqueror, or maybe Lifesteal, she heals back up and leaves you at a massive disadvantage. Now, you have two options. You either try to fight her and die, or you try to walk away, get slowed because your soul re-entered your body, and she then comes after you for round two, and you also die. I hate this champion. Her kit is awful, and basically requires her enemy to sit under the turret all game as any aggression is immediately punished. Alawi might look like a melee champion, but she's more like a ranged champion on a cooldown. 
She just pulls your soul out of you and she's got free reign over you. A lot of other champions are just as annoying to fight. Yumi is an insane healer that can be played using literally only your feet. Yeah, people legitimately play this way. Yasuo has an insane amount of dashes that not even the fastest champ could ever hope to escape, along with a knockup and a projectile blocking wall. Teemo makes the entire battlefield more of a minefield. This might be his one trick, but that trick is literally only fun for him and no one else. I like playing Teemo myself, but when you're fighting him he's a constant frustration, especially when you're playing a melee character. Those are just a few examples, but something else I've noticed is the straight up power creep this game has. Aphelios and Set are just two of the new champions that come with insanely complex or powerful kits, Aphelios being more of both and Set just being the latter. That makes it so the previously released champions have no hope of keeping up, except for a few outliers obviously. Instead, Riot puts a band-aid over the actual problem by releasing reworks for older champions that wouldn't have needed them if Riot didn't want to stuff every new character to the brim with jank. I'm personally incredibly salty about Volibear's rework, as he feels like a shell of his former self, even though his objective power may have increased. This increased power is in part due to the jank they added to his kit. Now he has a double W, two skill shots, one of which is his ultimate, which can also disable towers for a few seconds. Why? Why was this necessary? I think as soon as Volley disappears forever and a hollow clone replaces him, everyone's going to hate it. A tank with a lot of items being able to take hits from towers is fine enough, but potentially every teammate being able to completely annihilate enemies or towers themselves while being in their range with no consequences, that, to me, sounds like an awful time. One other part of the game that seems incredibly unbalanced are the summoner spells. So the game lets you pick from quite a few of them, and that's great. You got a ton of cool ones like Exhaust, Ghost, Heal, Ignite, and eh, oh wait, it's just Flash and something else basically no matter what. Flash is way, and I mean way too good. It is so good that basically every character in the game prefers Flash along with some other spell, most common of which are Teleport, Ignite, and Heal. This might be a controversial take, but either Flash's power needs to be significantly decreased or it should be removed entirely to allow for more spell variety. It's an imbalance people seem to have accepted and one which the game is balanced around, but in my opinion, the game would be better off without it. Like I said, it's an immensely powerful tool that almost guarantees an escape or kill every time it is used. A league where there are many viable spell builds on different characters sounds like it would be way healthier for the game. I'm not getting my hopes up though. Learning the game. Okay, so learning this game is hard. Way too hard. I have never seen such an insanely high skill floor like this before. Personally, I'm very much against games having a high skill floor. If you design a game to be played by tons of people and your players can't get into it because it's way too hard, you've failed as a designer. Simple as that. Your basic concepts should be easy to grasp and should get you a decent start in playing the game. Mastery comes from exploiting the mechanics in creative ways. Okay, hi, editing decks from the future here. I wanted to add something to this statement because by what I just said, I don't mean hard games are bad. What I mean is that your game shouldn't be hard to get into. I hate to use it as an example, but a hard game like Dark Souls is incredibly easy to get into. The mechanics are all very clear right from the first battle, and the controls take no time at all getting used to. The difficulty comes from learning the patterns of your opponents and how to best exploit them. Same for a game like Cuphead or even other competitive games like Street Fighter or, yeah, I'm really going here, Fortnite. What I think gives League such a high skill floor I'll get into in a sec, but I just wanted to make sure you don't take what I said the wrong way. Regardless, that's all I wanted to say, on with the rest of the video. How can you expect your players to master the mechanics if they don't even know what they are? This is probably one of the biggest problems League faces right now. To be fair, there is a tutorial and it does a good job of explaining the very, very basics of the game, but a lot of things that come up very often in gameplay go unexplained. 
For example, it is never explained that you get experience from minions even if you are not the one that killed them. Some abilities can hit enemy towers. How do you ping on the map? How important is the map? What do the various jungle buffs do? Why do you often play characters in certain lanes but not in others? You're all supposed to just know these things or look them up online or learn through experience but you should be able to read up on all of this. Without looking these things up, they are either unintuitive to learn, boring to learn, or would only be noticed by a handful of hawks through gameplay, while these are still important things to know. The least Riot could do is add more information within the client, or better yet, make more tutorials. Don't even force them, just have them available for the players who want them. The only thing that kept me playing for longer than a single game were my friends who were playing with me and as such I've dabbled in most of the things I mentioned here, but I would hardly call myself confident in my abilities, even after multiple hundreds of hours of playtime. So even for me, it would be greatly appreciated. I haven't even mentioned trying out new champions, which is a whole debacle in and of itself. At the start of the game you get access to a few of them, along with a weekly rotation of champions that you can try out. So this seems fine on paper, but how are you even supposed to know what champions you like? There are over 100 of them to choose from, so it's an incredibly daunting task to try them all out. Here's where we run into problems. For one, there is no short game mode where you can pick any champ you want and try them out for a quick match to see how you like them. I'm going to get into game modes more in a bit, but let me touch on the surface of them here. You either have ARAM, which is quick, but you get a champion randomly assigned from the ones that are playable for you at that time. Then, there might be a brawl on rotation, like Earth or Poro King, but these are very different from the main game and don't really feature the actual playstyles of the champions well. So there's that, or you play a full game of Summoner's Rift. At least 15 minutes of playing a character you might not even like. Add on top of that the game being incredibly difficult. So if, as a starting player, you fight someone who is even slightly better than you, or worse, a smurf, you can't really get a feel for the champ either way, because you'll get stomped and be forced to stay under your tower for the entire match, which you won't really know to do as a new player either, because the game doesn't teach you to do so. And lastly, for the cherry on top, add the toxicity into the mix, and soon you'll have all the ingredients for running away from the game before you've even really started it. Now you could argue that you can try out champions in the practice tool, or you look at their abilities in the client to see if they might be your speed, but more often than not, both of these don't give you any idea of what it's like to play an actual match with a champion in question. You could also say, well play against bots, but that doesn't alleviate the problem of being stuck with a champion for at best 15 minutes, and around 40 to 50 minutes at worst. It also doesn't give a realistic portrayal of the opponents you'll be facing. On top of that, there's also no way of trying out champions you don't own outside of the weekly rotation. Well, except for renting them by spending the resources you use to buy them. You can't even try unowned champions in the practice tool. This makes finding the right champion for you all the more painful. Content. Lastly, I wanted to go over the content within the game. From the outside looking in, with so many champions, it seems like there must be an endless amount of things to do to keep you busy. And while there definitely are a great number of champs, that's about all the game has going for it in terms of content. And this is still assuming you even get to play most of them. When you're starting out, you frankly don't get too many choices. So then, after a game or two of Summoner's Rift, you might want to turn your attention to the other modes that are available. I went over the game modes very quickly in the last section, but at most, there are only three modes available at a time. Summoner's Rift, ARAM, and a Brawl like Earth or Poro King, though these are only up during certain times. Two or three playable modes is laughably low. There is no dimension in which you can convince me that this is somehow okay. Oh, and that hypothetical short game mode where you could try out new champions that I just mentioned, well, it used to exist, and it was called Twisted Treeline, an overall much shorter, unique 3 on 3 game mode that was fun and low pressure for when Summoner's Rift becomes too much, but Riot decided to entirely remove this game mode, yet provides no new worthwhile content to make up for it. All we ever get 
is paid battle passes and skins, skins, skins. The common argument that has been made by players as well as Riot themselves is that these modes aren't being played as much as the other modes, so they take meaningful development time away from parts of the game that could benefit from it much more. But the thing is, they shouldn't have to. In case you forgot, Riot is not an indie studio. Riot is a multi-billion dollar company. They have more resources than we could ever comprehend having access to. So we should be able to expect, at the very least, 8 game modes playable at all times with 4 different maps overall. Not all game modes need to have different maps, just different modifiers that shake up the gameplay in a meaningful way, something like Earth, and one or two modes that are something totally unique like ARAM. Riot can easily do this, but instead they strip the game down as much as possible, holding hollow events that don't add much of anything and pass it off as new content. In this regard, Riot is unambitious at best, lazy and completely anti-consumer at worst. In a recent blog post, Riot addresses the lack of new game modes. Quote,